Today we're going to build the bowsprit step, but to do this, of course, we need to build the bowsprit because it makes no sense building the step if the bowsprit doesn't fit in it. So we're going to attempt to make the bowsprit, but I'm under no illusion that this is going to be the final um, one. It's really just to get the end of the bowsprit so that it fits neatly into the step. You'll find some great photographs in the 3D version that will help understand how we make this relatively simple piece. We've made some square stock of juniper and what we've done is you'll see a series of dimensions on the plan. We've dimensioned it off. Um, this part on the bottom here has a square section and I'm going to assume that it's square but tapered up to this point in time which is at an angle because the, the bowsprit points up. There's a flat piece called the bees. Um, so this part is going to be flat. The rest of this is going to be tapered and you can see the taper here and you can see the, the taper here. So from this point on, at this point in time, we're going to leave square and the back we're going to leave square. Although the lathe is totally capable of taking all the edges off, I just put a small plane uh, to cut some of the edges and just to put less stress on the piece while I machine it. I've marked off the bowsprit, this being the wide, widest part, 20 and a half inches. Then it goes down to 20 and an eighth, then 20 and three quarter, 18 and three quarter, then down to 16 and three eighths, and then finally 11 and a half. So we're going to start with the highest mark and just establish, take this down. Uh, 20 and a half, to, which is point 0.427. Once we uh, establish the diameter at, a at that particular point in time, we can go all the way down to the next diameter, in other words, follow that straight, um, as there's going to be a taper towards that next mark. Each of the arrows indicate the slope is going this way, and then the slope is going all the way. So we'll start here and slowly take off a slight amount as we come down to here. As, so the wheel is going to be pushing the cutter this way and we're going to be going in very, very slightly all the time. We've got that almost down. Sandpaper is going to take the rest away. Now we're going to start from here and come down to this one moving in this direction. The more you try this technique, the better you'll get at it. Um, if you're nervous, it's better to, to leave more on the piece and take it down with sandpaper as you go along. Um, it's, it's simply a, a technique that you can easily master. And I'm pretty happy with that, so we can start working on the end. The most important thing is to have lines established on the square piece, which give you the flexibility to know how to do the taper. And, um, and these lines need to be established before you start doing any lathe work. I'm cheating a little bit with the bowsprit. Um, the bees are two pieces of wood that are added to the end of the bowsprit um, through which four sheaves are, are placed. I've made it up at this point in time as a solid piece, um, which means that at a later point in time I'm going to remake um, the bowsprit um, in a way that the book suggests. And we do our trial fit. And there we have it. So
So it's been an interesting little exercise. Um, I will, as I said, remake the bowsprit. The purpose of making it at this point in time is really just to establish this step, which I couldn't do um, at a later point in time. So we'll cover that in more detail um, on another video. Now for the bowsprit cap. The stock is 48 inches long, 22 inches wide, and 8 inches thick. And the first thing we need to do is have an angled cut at the top and the bottom. And we'll do that on the bench sander. I actually tried to drill the holes on the Cameron drill press. But that XY table um, doesn't hold a piece hard, so I reverted back to the um, milling machine and of course that locks it in place and the challenge is really just getting the angle correct um, which is not that hard you can you can use um, a protractor to establish the angle instead of a drill bit i used a millen because um, there would be no drift at all with the millen and for the piece below the square section um, I just used a chisel to square the hole out. I used a dowel to make up the jib boom. This is really just a temporary um, piece. I will make this out of juniper when it comes. And um, So it fits just to complete the piece. This is the Jim Boom saddle um, which holds the Jim Boom and it's lashed down to the bowsprit. We have two more tasks before we can proceed. The first is we have to establish the forecastle beams, which are quite a bit smaller. And then we have to start making the bowsprit step, uh, which the heel of the bows, uh, bowsprit fits into, and in a sense gives it its strength. What we've done, establish the height of the clamp, um, and we've installed uh, a beam, and you can see they're quite a bit smaller than the um, the upper deck beams. These um, forecastle deck beams are six and a half by five, while the um, upper deck beams are nine inches by seven. We've made a trial piece um, that is straight, so now we have to put a slight angle to bring this piece back so that it's at 90 degrees to the forecastle deck. I've used the adjustable square to work out the angle for the four top sail bit. Now we've got that set, we can make up the piece. When I got my gym bonds, I thought in the first instance that I would never use the Priac again. But it's such a wonderful saw, um, particularly for doing work like this which is creating recesses in very small pieces and using very thin blades. It's really a, a fantastic tool and um, I, I will have it for as long as I am modeling. Well, here's my first attempt. Um, not something I'd normally show or be proud of. Um, it does show me I have to square off the heel of the bowsprit get a nice clean join but I sure screwed up the piece the flat piece needs to be recessed against the partner so I made this a little short and this could probably come up a little bit um, 
so again when setting it up I would go a little high on this and then um, sand it back down before adding the sides pretty sloppy job remaking parts is, is certainly a, <laughs> a standard part of this build as we remade the um, the step piece it only took three of these to get it right of course I made up all these pieces um, and then realized that they had to be much longer because they, um, they go above the deck at least um, to the height of these ballads but on the plan you actually see them quite a bit higher than than the bollards on this side. So I've made up three extra new ones which I'll reconfigure and then decide the height. These are the National Maritime Museum plans and uh, as you can see that's the height there. So we made them oversized and we'll figure it out. There's a discussion in the book about whether the top of these pieces were shaped like a bollard um, or just simply tapered at the top. Um, the, the plan that I have from the National Maritime Museum shows them being um, tapered and, and shaped similar to a bollard, so that's what I'm going to do. Now we have to put the two sheave holes in. The only way this can be done is um, using a mill of some sort so you get a nice straight clean line. It just requires that we line it up um, so it's dead, dead center. Now that all the pieces are made, um, it's just really sticking it together and clamping it. Um, I use PVA glue. Um, which gives me a lot of working time um, so I'd suggest you, you use the same The final challenge is to make up the cheek faces which match the holes that we've already established um, to take the 7 inch sheaves. Um, these sheaves are the exact same um, size sheave, um, 7 inches, but it's a 1 inch hole and it should match perfectly with the holes that are already drilled. Um, so this is a relatively straightforward process. Again the pre saw is ideal for this fine work. Because the pieces are so small and, and really difficult, we suggest that you use PVA, which gives you working time to hold them in place. Um, CA will simply, if you get it wrong, um, you, you'll have difficulty and ruin the entire part. Now all we have left to do is to paint the piece and put it on the model. That's quite a long process of putting the frames in. And, um, when I started this exercise, <laughs> I didn't realize um, how many added pieces had to be made up before um, frames 3 and 4 could go in. So at least now we can proceed uh, with the rest of the framing and hopefully we won't have so many additions um, as we go forward. So we'll see you in the next video.